We first spoke about Engine back in 2019, and uh, a lot of my students in my DeFi Academy uh, bought into the protocol back then, and they are super excited to watch this. Um, funny enough, I was literally just on a phone call with a British reporter talking about how I'm gifting NFTs to all my family and my students and even some of my team members here. And the reporter paused for a second and said, Brian, what is an NFT? And I gave an explanation, but I thought, you know what, I might as well start there and ask you that question. And maybe then that leads to NFTs for gaming because that kind of changes, I think, the lens that you look at NFTs. But I will start with that very basic question. How do you answer that thing? So an NFT is a digital token on a blockchain, but it means it's non-fungible. So it, it's one of one, right? Instead of a, a cryptocurrency where you can have a million or 10 million or 21 million, uh, NFT is a unique ID. So if you have that ID, you're the only person who has that ID in the world. And so that can be used in so many interesting ways. Uh, you know, we're living in a di digital world right now, digital space. So when you want to identify something that you own, that only you own, you can use an NFT for that. Wow. And it's, it's such a strange name because it's these three letters, but it means so many different things. And yeah, I was trying to say, you know, you know, there's so many unique things in this world. We, we forget how many things are actually unique and not, not that are fungible. We're used to things, like you said, cryptocurrency, you know, pretty much one Bitcoin is the same as another Bitcoin. Okay. They might've been mined at a different time. Uh, pretty much one share of Apple is the same as another share of Apple. I don't care if Rihanna happened to have owned it before. Um, but when you get to non-fungible things, I mean, every business is unique. Every piece of real estate is unique. Uh, every one of us, I guess, is unique. So as humans, we're used to unique things, but when you stick them on the blockchain, people don't know what they are. And again, the first version of them was pretty much JPEGs. And I think that's thanks to you and the protocol you wrote back in the day, which probably birthed, you know, crypto kitties and all that. How do you view that first wave of what we've seen known as NFTs versus maybe the future? Well, people, you know, first started making NFTs, I think for gaming, uh, some of the first use cases, like you mentioned, uh, crypto kitties also from Vancouver here where I live. Um, th they're really just trying to express this, this idea where you can own something in a, in a game. Right. And we were a gaming company in the beginning. So we, we were thinking about how, like we, we were looking at Ethereum and, and all kinds of tokens on Ethereum and how to, how to use this in a gaming context. And we looked at games and everyone owns, you know, unique things inside these games. They have unique characters and games have these millions of different kinds of items. Um, so we think that, you know, both fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens are really interesting in the game. Like I've been playing games my entire life and I, you know, I, I've had probably 20 years of online gaming where I, I have, you know, spent thousands of hours inside these games. I want to have access to that, that my, my characters, my history, the items that I owned, but a lot of those things have basically vanished, right? So I think this technology, a lot of people are interested in it because then they can take these items, these characters, these experiences, um, their assets, their digital property with them into the future.